Hi guys, I'm JM, this is the Lotus Diaries, and today I'm testing a couple of Avoras with automatic gearboxes. I've been asked by a few people what the car's like with an auto box, so I decided to come and find out, because I've so far never driven one. Now I decided to start with the old IPS box. Now, it should be worth noting that Lotus do not call their automatic gearbox the IPS anymore, it's just called the auto. It is fundamentally the same thing, it's still a six-speed traditional torque converter automatic from Toyota, but Lotus decided that the IPS brand was either no longer applicable or necessary, or they just weren't fooling anyone to thinking it was a DSG box when it definitely isn't. So we're starting with the old car, and I want to give special thanks to Jamie and Bell and Colville for lending me this car and a 400, which you're going to see in a little bit. Okay, so first things first, I've got to get out of here, and this car is parked really nice and tight, so let's see if I can get out of here without damaging any of their stock. Well, that's convenient. Now, I do really like the Evora, but rear visibility, side visibility, is just not this car's strong point. In fact, it's one of the car's few weak points. So, this is basically the worst possible situation you can drive one in. Now, I should actually say one of the benefits of this being a traditional automatic rather than a dual clutcher is it will creep. So for low speed manoeuvres it is infinitely better than a dual clutch or a single clutch for that matter. Okay so on the move. Now if you're paying particular attention and if you're a frequent viewer you may have noticed something is up, but not yet been able to work out what. Uh, well, I'm on the wrong side of the car. This is a left-hand drive car, so hopefully nothing will go drastically and terribly wrong whilst I'm driving it. Now, I'm gonna start off in drive. So the car has drive just like any normal automatic, and you can then override it with the paddles and it has a sport mode as well. And the sport mode changes both the automatic shifting and the manual shifting as well. So we're gonna try not to drive down the middle of the road. I do really like the old Evoras. They're such a nice place to be. This one's got the uh, premium seats with the Venom red. Oh, it's red, maybe it's not Venom, but it's red piping. They're really, really nice. I like these Recaros. I think maybe I prefer them over the newer Sparkos. I'd say the older car probably rides a bit softer than the newer one, actually. Yeah. Seems to be soaking up these bumps a little bit better. It's very seamless as it happens. I haven't really even thought about it changing gear, but it's gone all the way through to six already. So, as a regular auto, it seems to work pretty well. One thing I will note, I've seen a lot of guys in the USA talk about the very limited room that there is in the footwell and getting in this car I can see what you mean I mean, this is an auto box so there's only two pedals down here and with three pedals it definitely definitely would be a crap footwell so if you're an existing Avora and you've previously driven one and that's one of your experiences that you've taken away with the 400 that is significantly improved now Obviously, my only experience of the 400 is in right-hand drive form, but I know in right-hand drive form, when you're on the right side of the car, there is a lot more room in the footwell. So one would assume that they've also given it an awful lot more room on the left-hand side as well. So hopefully that's something of an improvement. Right. So auto mode, limited it along, foot down. Let's change down. It's not the most rapid thing in the world. All these cars do handle nice. It actually sounds quite good as well. So, and then it sort of drops back after a while. Okay, now back to a national speed limit. Back up. I've not got my foot all the way to the floor here, so change down to fourth there. It's a badger. Not whether it's alive, whether it's dead. Nasty things, badgers. So far, I would say this gearbox is probably as good as the old six-speeder that I had in my BMW 6 Series. Never going to set the world on fire, but 
does its job. So I'm just going to put this into sport mode, but still in drive now. So change down straight away from 6th to 5th. I'm cruising at about 90 kph, which is about 50 mile an hour. And then it's quite eager to change down. You need to put your foot down less and it'll change down. Very, very nice throttle response there. I'd say the biggest difference here is that with the normal mode, you put your foot down, it realises that you want to have a play, and so it'll keep the gears in a higher rev range. But then once you back off, it fairly quickly drops down into the higher gears, lower RPM. Now, with the sports mode, it seems when you take your foot off, it holds the gear considerably longer before it realises that you know you've kind of had enough now on this road in normal mode the car was straight into six but it seems to pretty much not want to do that i've got i've not even got my foot on the accelerator at the moment and it's staying in fifth so that's interesting it's obviously going to have a set limit for when it then does change into sixth but this road clearly isn't fast enough i gather on the motorways that the car definitely would always oh, got a nice little blip when you come down, Orn has come down to second gear already in 60 kph, so that's about 38 mile an hour or so, I think. So it's uh, very, very sporty when you kind of come into a corner. I wasn't approaching that corner very fast at all, but it still went down through the gears. It sounded very pleasant when it was doing it as well. So to get into manual mode, you just press a paddle. It's just had to go at me because it was actually in first already. Ah, oh, pretty clear road. So I'm going to turn sport off, and it's a mild shift, very very mild. There's a fair delay between you pressing the paddle and it changing up, but to be honest. It doesn't seem excessively bad considering it is a traditional auto box. Shifts are uh, very, very smooth. They're certainly not a sort of thwack thwack that you would get out of a single clutcher. Now, if you're driving it around town, I'd say this is going to be a pretty pleasant box to use. Yeah, our downshift really, really quite slow there. not a quick box. It's smooth, but it's not quick. Car's quick though. I like it. It's cool. It's a huge gap between fourth and fifth. Nearly a thousand RPM drop there. So, oh you bastard. So let's go into sport. Sport changes the throttle response quite a bit. I think you'd get used to this gear shift. I'm starting to get used to it. I say if you're if you're expecting a sort of PlayStation-esque instant response, you're going to be disappointed. But it works well. It's actually probably quite similar to some of the gearboxes that Aston used in some of their cars, particularly the DB9, yeah, which was just a automatic box with a paddle shift on it and that was perfectly good. The car hasn't refused a shift yet. I haven't asked it to do anything silly. So you turn sport mode off and it's gone back into its drive mode. It's normal sedate. I mean, it works, it works. It's not a gearbox that's ever gonna win any awards. It's never gonna set your air on fire. But to be honest, it probably shows you the state of your modern traditional automatic gearbox. I've driven cars with older boxes and this is a lot better, it's a lot nicer. You know, it's still a six speed unit, so it's a far, far cry from some of the early sort of Porsche Tiptronic things. Um, it's, yeah, it's generally it's a nice thing to use, really. I, just, I don't know what much more I can say on it. Uh, so let's get into 400 now and see how that's moved things on. Bearing in mind that it is still fundamentally the same mechanical, so it's largely a software update as far as I'm concerned, and obviously the 400 being a fairly different car anyway. I want to see how they've changed the gearbox to match the car's newer, slightly more aggressive character and whether they've succeeded and if you know, you've know you driven a 
Porsche PDK box or even say an SMG box, how does it cope and compare? So in the 400, and first thing to note is it's amazing how different the 400 feels from the older car. I think the dash seems to just fall in a better place. The whole thing just feels so much more open and airy and spacious and this one's fitted with black leather. So this is as dark and as dingy as it's ever gonna get. Okay, so let's move out. Controls are roughly the same as they were before. So drive, normal mode. As before, I'm up to a 50 mile an hour, which is the speed limit on this particular row. The car's moved itself into six already. And the beautiful English weather has set in. So there's a couple of things worth noting that are different in the Evora 400 Auto compared with the manual 400. Our first difference is that in the automatic you have a slightly lower rev ceiling. In the manual, when you engage sport or race mode, you can rev the car up to 7,000 RPM. The automatic, however, is a lower ceiling of 6,600 RPM. This apparently is due to the gearbox just not being able to take the higher RPM. Now that does have an effect on top speed, which in the auto is reduced from 186 to 174. But let's be realistic, unless you're playing top trumps, both of those speeds are unlikely to be attained even on some of the quicker tracks. So. I shouldn't really worry about that and in fact with the new Evora Sport 410 Lotus are recording a slightly faster 0 to 60 time. Well, Jamie at Bell and Colville tells me that the fastest way to launch one of these is to basically get to the lights, engage race mode, engage drive, do not use manual mode and simply floor it and the car will just do what it needs to and I can believe him. I'm not going to try that here because we're on the public roads and I can't block them off and that'll be a slightly antisocial thing to do. but. I'm sure that is probably the most efficient way to launch this car. You can tell the 400 also feels a bit stiffer than the older car. And the payoff is basically increased uh, control of body roll and a bit sharper turning. So let's take this car out of drive normal and move it into sport. Now in this car you have sport and race modes. Let's start with sport but still let it in the car shift its own gears. Now with the 400, obviously you press sport mode and it opens up the flap in the exhaust so you get an increased noise. It will have sharpened the throttle response as it does in the older car. I'm afraid this is not really the ideal day to be testing these cars, but if I waited for immaculate weather whenever I wanted to film something, I'm afraid I'd never update the channel. So uh, you'll have to bear with me on this one, but thank you all for your support. Uh, it's also worth noting that in the 400, they've laid out the dash in a slightly different way. So in this car, your speed is up here. Now this can be changed between mile an hour and kilometers per hour in the menu. And then down here, you have your gear shift information. That's much better than the last car, because in the older car, in manual cars, this was your speedo, and it was always the same uh, units as this, which is not particularly useful if you're going abroad. Apparently there is a way to change it. I don't know what that is. In these cars, it's really easy to in the menu. But on this car, obviously you've got your speed reading and you've got your gear shift reading over here. So it's much more logically laid out. 50 mile an hour and it's in fourth at just over 2,200 RPM. If I put it in race, I wonder if it changes again. No, no change. And to be honest with wet weather today, it's not the day for race. I'm just going to give this a little poke at sort of 50 odd mile an hour just to see what it does, whether it how much it changes. That seemed to be very quick to do that. Now in the old car, it seemed to work its way down the gears a bit before it then gave you what you were asking for. That seemed to be more, right, your foot down, here's the gear you want, off you go. So just shortened what it was doing a little bit. It seemed a little bit smarter. So that did seem a bit improved. I've just gone to go and change gear. Sorry, it's forced to have, I've just got, I'm at home because I'm in this car. What a wally. Oh. Slightly rude downshifts. Oh, well, bus, I hope you're not going the way I'm going. Please turn right, please turn right. I think he's turning right. No, no, oh, God. Oh. In 
normal mode, the downshift feels as slow as it did before upshift, maybe fractionally quicker. Yeah, it does it fairly shortly after you ask it. Oh, that downshift was a little bit better. I guess it makes its mind up on a case-by-case -case basis. Let's put it into sport mode now. Ah, uh, the bus is turning off, this would be a good opportunity. Oh, the downshift is quite nice. The downshift is really nice. So... Upshift is pretty quick in sport mode. It's, it's the downshifts that, that suffer, the downshifts just are not that quick. When your foot's not on the throttle, it's not doing things very quickly. It's, yeah, it's, it's always doing something slightly different. I guess when your foot's planted, it's, it gets better and better and better. Ah, oh, come off it. Another thing that the 400 Auto is missing, in comparison to the manual, is a limited slip diff. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with what a limited slip diff does. If you're not, go look it up, then come back. Looked it up? Good. Okay, so the 400 manual is fitted with the limited slip diff. Now that's quite significant because as far as I know, it is the first road car Lotus have ever fitted as standard with a limited slip diff. Historically, Lotus have never felt the desire or the necessity for a limited slip diff. I don't know what their precise reasoning is, but you know, given the quality of the cars that they've put out there, you can't really blame them. And uh, Well, I'm glad I got a little bit of the car in the dry before this happened. Yeah, it's, it's a really smooth gearbox. Again, not surprising. Upshifts have a little bit of a thwack when you've got your foot down and you're in sport mode. I couldn't see myself probably having an automatic one of these, mainly because I don't drive it in city traffic on a constant basis and you know I want to enjoy the manual sports car while a thing still exists. Now I would say that if you are considering a 400 Auto because you think you need the Auto, yeah definitely get it. Now if you're expecting a PDK or an S-Tronic or a DSG box then you are going to be disappointed but frankly this works as well as I think one can expect a traditional torque converter automatic too. And the upshifts are great, so make it progress, upshifts no problem. And it does do its lovely blip on the downs. Yeah, that's nice. So, you know, yeah, it works. You want a paddle shift box? Oh, the paddles themselves are actually very nice. They haven't got the sort of quite click click that you get with some of the nicer sort of Ferrari paddles and that, but they appear to be made out of, well, I'm pretty sure they're metal. They're a good size. They move with the wheel as well. Uh, that is kind of important because, you know, if you are halfway turned and you need to change gear, which can happen if you're going for a particularly long corner, then, you know, the paddles are always going to be there. They're not going to be down here. They are in the traditional configuration where the left is down, right is up, and they're not like McLaren where you can push it either direction and it'll change the other way. It's uh, one paddle for one direction. That could be a new album for the guys. I actually quite like where the buttons are. I'll take a picture in a minute and show you. I, I really like where the buttons are placed down here for everything. It feels nice. I've seen a few cars where you can sort of tell that they designed it with one gearbox or another, and then the features for the opposite gearbox seem to be a little strange. Holy shit. Uh, Aston Martin, I've never quite got over their sort of big buttons in the dash it seems to be a little bit weird to me and I've never been fond of the Jaguar like rotary selector either uh, or actually in the Lamborghini uh, Gallardo you know what? actually one of the main things that put me off that with the e-gear is that you have the paddles you got the stuff down here and then the reverse is a button over here like they engineered the gearbox and they designed it and they did it and then they forgot to put the button for reverse on so it's over here for no good reason so it's been a short little feature today. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been informative. You know, the summary is, you fancy one of these with the auto box, the new one's definitely better. Not by miles. It's, it's not probably the big improvement that they've made with a manual shift, but it's a serviceable gearbox. If you're driving around town, they definitely have one of these. 
Uh, so bear in mind the couple of little things that you're, you're missing, i.e. your higher RPM limit and your limited slip diff. They may or may not be of any significance to you. But yeah, it's still a good box. Lotus are getting better and better and better. It's nice that they even offer one. And a few years ago, that they, they simply didn't at all. So they're doing the very best that they can with what they have, which is generally their way. Loads more content coming for you soon. Over 275 subscribers now. I am absolutely over the moon about that. 15,000 views. I am really, really happy. Very, very thankful for all of the comments, likes, and the subscriptions, and feedback that I've got. Hope to see you guys soon. And uh, I'll try and bring you some better weather. I'm supposed to go to a Piston Heads meet today, but that could be a washout for the second time in a row. See you soon. I hope the weather's better where you are. Bye-bye. Wow. It's June, by the way. This, this is June. So if you live in California and you're looking for a lodger and you fancy some sort of semi-well-spoken English car fanatic type, uh, why don't you write in and tell me? Because just about now, I'm kind of wondering why I live in the country that I do. We make good cars, but... We don't appear to have the weather to use them.